Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Rohit Kumar, and I'm from a company called GTI Informat. We have done uh, a little implementations of this kind of yes. And also, we have uh, uh, put up some of the work that we have done on, on open source, which uh, I'm going to put in there. What a guy. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is the GTI practice management suite that, uh, that the company developed and put up on open source. I'll talk about the functionalities uh, of outpatients and, and inpatients, and some of the other implementations that the GTI took because of this uh, work that, uh, that we had done. Uh, following that, I'll go, go over with uh, the Indian healthcare industry. Uh, Indian as in the one uh, which is in India, not the Indian health industry over here. And uh, I'm going to talk about how Vista uh, is the right solution and what are the concerns that Vista may have once we start implementing something like that. At GTI, we always believe that uh, practice management is one of the first things that uh, anybody looks at when they're trying to implement Vista. And uh, to have uh, patients getting registered to roll and stroll is really a huge challenge. Uh, which is why it's the first thing that we, we took over and then we implemented uh, the practice management suite on, on EWD uh, using uh, nice looking uh, GUIs and, uh, and we de uh, developed that for, for a while. And finally we put that up on open source. Last time I presented at that time we were still working on it, but uh, last year sometime is when we put up uh, uh, the code from Oshira as well as uh, a source code. But before going forward, I'd really like to thank everybody at, uh, at World Vista who gave us this opportunity you know, to, to work with us right from uh, Nancy, uh, Dave Witten, you have been very helpful in uh, helping us with certain codes, uh, George Lilly, Chris, and uh, yeah, of course uh, Gus Landis as well, he's not here today or at, at this part of the conference. Uh, Eric Marshall, he helped us with the uh, namespace and everything else. Yeah. And uh, uh, Greg Kreese, he was not here, but I attended one of his, uh, his courses and understood a lot about Vista Foundation. So that, that's how I started to learn about, about Vista a couple of years ago. And uh, last but definitely not the least, uh, least is uh, Rob Tweed, because of whom the whole EWD thing is uh, being, being worked upon by us. So the, the package contains uh, two, uh, two different things. One, one is the, uh, the, the outpatient, and the second one is the inpatient. So we have built in several functionalities, uh, right from the registration for the, of the patient in the very, very first visit, uh, followed by editing, viewing, printing the patient uh, demographics, creating visits, uh, searching patient details, uh, making uh, follow-up OPDs, canceling appointments, uh, seeing the appointment list, and, and everything else. And uh, the inpatient functionality was we recently added. Earlier, we were only working with the outpatient. Uh, we, uh, we started doing the admission, discharge, and transfers. And of course, all the editing and viewing and printing the information, uh, switching the beds between the wards, uh, absconding reports. Uh, since, since it's a government hospital, there's a lot of abscons uh, in the hospital as well. Uh, list out admission based on the record numbers and list out patients. And one of the major things that we implemented is the electronic uh, uh, medical legal cases because there's a lot of police cases that happen in India and each one of them has to be registered with, uh, with the police. I'll go over some of the, uh, uh, some of the screenshots and give you a fairly good idea of what we did. It's not all of them, but a little. Uh, so for, first you have the OP uh, uh, which is the registration, patient search, advanced search followed by the uh, admission, discharge, and, and transfers. And this is standard uh, registration, which we developed uh, for one of the hospitals uh, in, in India. Then we finally took this over and developed it for several other hospitals as well that I'll, I'll talk about. Sorry. Uh, now once the registration is done, uh, one of the key things that we have implemented is a search. So we can search the patient in uh, any um, any way that's possible, right from the CR number of the patient to the first name, uh, uh, first name, age, sex, when the patient was registered, all on on one all on one screen. And it can even be searched on the broad in detail because this was implemented at trauma center. So a lot of patients come in and uh, they are unconscious at that time. 
there was a lot of concern about we need to search the patient because they did not know the name of the patient at all. We need to search the patient uh, based on uh, you know who, who brought the patient there. Then of course it gives all the search results and uh, telling the first name, last name, registration date, date of birth, uh, various mobile numbers and registration addresses. You can print out the forms, you can make appointments uh, once, once the patient registered. This particular hospital's appointments are only possible for the patients who were admitted to the trauma center. It's not an open appointment system. So they, for their first uh, uh, cross-reference with their own CR number once, once they were admitted, only then they were giving the, they are given the appointments. You can, of course, take out the appointment list. Uh, and since the amount of patient is quite high, we have to implement a token system. So once uh, they are in the trauma center, then they have to wait for their turn and token number to, to go and see a doctor. And it gives various options to create a visit, cancel the appointment, or a no-show. So the patient is not showing at the end of the day. There is a person in there who, who goes back and checks who came in and who did not come in. You can create visits, and you can list the number of visits for a particular uh, consultant. Uh, then we, that, that was all for the OP, at least uh, some of it. And uh, then we implemented the admission, uh, the, the ADP portion, uh, essentially. And it gives you the complete uh, admission details, right, from barcoding and, and everything else. And of course, all of this is going uh, back into Vista. So all this information available on CPRS and, and everywhere else. Uh, transfers, so you can transfer the patient from uh, between different wards or between the two different beds of, a, of the same ward. Are there open questions or later on? Sure, go ahead, please. Uh, if you go back to the diagnosis, yes. uh, it's a top down list, it's not an ICD 9, is that true? Right. No, it's not. It's not. You use ICD 10, right? Well, uh, we are not using ICD 10 over there. And they, in any case, the diagnosis list over here was given to us by the trauma center. So it was, it was a specific list, not ICD-9, not ICD-10. And that was the list that we were working on. Because they, they, they don't have standard, uh, uh, at least uh, they don't have a standard diseases for the ICD. They have very limited number, you know, like burn victims, accident victims, and things like those. And they had specific uh, uh, nomenclatures for those. So, so could you put in? Uh, another list like ICD 9 or 10? We could, yes. So this was actually going into a different place in the database. And this goes where in the CPRS? Uh, it's actually, this particular thing would not go in CPRS, but it will show in all of the TWD front end. But it will go in the GDM database that uh, Vista is using. After that, we have the discharge when the patient is uh, getting ready to discharge. So th this is this what uh, we did, and uh, we, we put that up in open source about uh, uh, last year sometime. And uh, uh, at the Vista Expo, uh, we even got some little award for, for doing this. So for a very little effort that, that we did, and uh, we took we finally took took this forward and implemented at. Uh, uh, the Directorate of Health Services Hospitals in uh, in, in Delhi. Now, the, the DHS handles the largest number of patients uh, in the country. And when I say large number of patients in India, that, that means huge number. So right now, the DHS has 24 hospitals that, that they're running, out of which uh, we are working in 12 hospitals. And the total number of patients that we are handling is about 8 million in a year. Yeah. Now, uh, when I say 8 million patients, you can see the list of hospitals that, that we're working at. Uh, right from Guru Tegh Bahadur Hospital, which is a 1500 bed hospital, going down to a smaller hospital with just 30 beds. So some of uh, super specialties, some are uh, very specific uh, ANC hospitals, uh, and some are uh, medium-sized hospitals. The number of OP registration to casualty to IPD registrations are all, all put in. Now here in India, what happens is that uh, Larger hospitals are immediately not looking at the full-fledged EHR. They're looking at something which is uh, where you implement only the HIS. When I say HIS, I mean uh, the registration, OB, and IP. And once they have that information, in phase two, they start looking at the EHR. Right? So well, what we did was we took the, uh, the work that, that we, we had done 
and we, we took that forward. And since there were two different hospitals, we, we had to implement and we have to customize for each one of them separately. So uh, the development here was, uh, you know, the HIA software uh, development, installation, maintenance of, of the software that, that we are doing right now. And it, it, it has only very specific OP and IP features, casualty, the admission research transfers. This one has ICD coding, incidentally this has ICD 10. So we are actually doing ICD coding over here. And uh, you know, medical legal coding and lab. These are the specific things that we are doing. The EHR, of course, is not really implemented over here. That is going phase two that we are negotiating with them right now. And all the hardware, software, and manpower have been supplied by us. So we have about 150 people across uh, these 12 hospitals who, who are working not, not only to support the software, but also to do the data entry uh, for at every position that, that requires this to be done. And all the consumables, including uh, printers, barcode labels, everything else has also been supplied by us. And of course, there's extensive uh, BIDW people uh, that, that goes along with it because they require a huge amount of information uh, out, of, out of the system. Uh, which is why, uh, when I say that, that information were turnkey, in larger government setups in India, they are looking for uh, turnkey. So which is why we, we had to evolve ourselves where uh, we do an end-to-end -end, uh, solution for a hospital. You know, right, right from uh, implementing the EHR if, if they're required, or go over to the practice manager, and then do customization for the hospitals, and do an O&M, and of course, finally do the manpower. Because there are not, not many clinicians out there who are wanting to do uh, the entries themselves. Uh, we also implemented uh, a very small component called a bed management system at the hospital called Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute. It's a 350 bed cancer hospital in, in Delhi. And uh, it, it's integrated with Vista. It's a very uh, a dynamic uh, GUI that, that we developed where uh, the clinicians are able to uh, see all the, uh, all the information about a bed uh, graphically. So the information goes to the registration, the finance, and the clinicians. And uh, the ward nurse is able to view the beds based on the floor, based on the uh, types. And uh, the beds are color coded. So whether they are occupied, they are in transit, they are in housekeeping, or they are blocked or available. These are the five colors that we are given to the beds. I'll show you some of the screenshots. And there are several reports, the bed utilization reports, uh, turnaround time reports, number of uh, number of beds occupied at any particular time. Uh, and uh, besides, the modeling is being done in 24 by 7. Uh, it's a simple uh, simple software that's integrated using using Word. It's not, we are not used to uh, EWD here. And uh, it also uh, takes the HL7 messages from, uh, from, from Vista that, that it consumes and then uh, it gives the information that, that, that they need. This is the dashboard that they see, and they have put a huge 50-inch uh, uh, monitors where they can see the entire screen at, at, at one place. And this is a block wise They have a block, a floor, and uh, block floor, and uh, one more thing that they call. So it, it, the screen can be put up either way. And the red, the yellow, and the green uh, are the bed statuses, and there are two, two other status like that. You can do it floor wise and then if you took, uh, take a mouse over, you give the patient information in terms of the CR number, the name, the age, the sex, uh, the attending doctor, and the date of admission. Once you do a mouse over, again, all this information is coming from this directly. You have an occupancy report for every bed, for uh, uh, for each each of the bed categories that you have on the left. Total number of beds occupied, blocked, vacant, and the percentage of occupancy. And you have utilization reports for any, any specific uh, awards. Uh, the turnaround time, this was very important for them because they had uh, uh, several issues in, term of, uh, in, in terms of when the bed was getting vacated and when the new patient was coming in. Because uh, fortunately or unfortunately, the hospital is more than 100% occupied in the sense that the patient walk in in the morning and they keep on waiting for the beds to get uh, free. Uh, and the patient who is already in the bed, who has been given a discharge, he does not want to move out. 
for whatever reason. He wants to just stay there for whatever reason. So the patients who are coming in, they are still sitting in the uh, in the reception, waiting for the beds to get empty. Then there were several reasons why this was happening. So they needed to know exactly at which stage uh, the the time was taken. So it, they, they they have four different stages. One is a discharge uh, summary that has been prepared, followed by the bed. Uh, the bill settlement time, whether the patient settled the bill or not. Uh, the pharmacy settlement time, so if the patient has been given a pharmacy uh, uh, slip, he goes out and buys uh, uh, his, his medicine. And then when the bed was vacated and when the bed was prepared by, by the housekeeping. So each of this data is being put uh, manually in the system. I'll show you that, that interface. And at the end of the day, then it's giving uh, a tracking report for uh, for admins to uh, take a look at it. And then there are transit status. So you have different beds and then uh, uh, whichever is the ward uh, nurse who comes in and whether the discharge summary has been made, whether the transfer is done, whether the uh, uh, billing has been done, all those information, they just put a click on it and that's how the system moves forward. At the end of the day, you do a report on it. Now this is how you manage all the beds. Uh, different flows, different wards, and you can color code the bed accordingly. Give you a bed list. You can change the status of the bed. Uh, this is where the, the status of the bed gets gets changed. Uh, or you can block a particular bed if you want it to, so nobody else could go in there. And you can view all the beds together, add a new bed uh, to, to to the hospital. So this this is something that we did specifically for one of the hospitals and. Uh, the suite actually can be replicated for any 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 application for a bed, bed management system. We did uh, a lot of uh, VIDW tools uh, for it's something so very simple as the unsigned report uh, for for uh, basically it's run by clinicians who have not signed a particular report. So it gives out a, a list of all the patients and uh, the status as unreleased and when was the date of entry. And we also did some performance uh, measurement reports, uh, which has specific inclusions and exclusions uh, based on which it, it gives out a report. In this particular case, uh, here are the patients uh, who have been discharged on anti-thrombolytic therapy, and inclusions included uh, patients who are out patient prescription or medical or, or medication for that uh, anti-thrombolytic treatment. And exclusion included the patient who are under the age of 18 who are in the clinical trials and needed for specific CBD course. And guess what report? This we did using uh, uh, KBSQL and uh, interest rate reports. These are, these are very standard uh, uh, OP reports uh, for, uh, you know, for, for specific hospitals. Uh, taking that forward, uh, uh, I'd like to talk about how how the Indian healthcare IT scenario is and uh, where where rest of it's in and what what efforts that we have been doing in in this particular respect. To give you a gen general idea, uh, we have a population of 1.1 billion people uh, and growing as as I speak. Uh, that's going to go up to about 1.35 billion. Uh, we we have a number of uh, inpatient cases to be 35 million a year, which will go up to 55. And the doctors per thousand is just 0.5, and uh, we're expected to go, hopefully we're expected to go to 1.2 uh, per, per thousand. And the number of OP cases, of course, is gonna, gonna double at that time. Now compare this to other parts of the world, right? So if, if you compare the bed per thousand, we have only 1.5 bed per, per thousand patients. Doctors are only 0.5 and nurses are only 0.9. Although India is the largest country to export nurses outside of India. But within India, we have only a 0.9 per 1,000 nurse. Uh, compared that even to a lower income group, Africa, South Southeast Asia, where these numbers are much bigger than what, what we have in India. And of course, much, uh, uh, much, much lower than the high income like US, UK, and the rest of Europe. <laughs> So, of course, there's a lot of scope because all of that figures need to go up. And uh, if you look at the market potential within within the domestic, uh, there is a huge uh, shift 
as the industry is getting organized, they, they are not uh, uh, they, they are not too many so-called mom and pop hospitals, but they're larger hospitals that are coming in. Uh, the growth rate is uh, at a 15 percent CAGR. It's a 36 billion dollar industry today, going to go up to 280 billion by 2012, 2022. The Indian economy is going well, and the profitability on this thing is also going up. It's becoming a huge destination for medical tourism. And when I talk about medical tourism, people who are coming in, everybody wants to have a very good uh, uh, EHR system, a very good medical record that they need to take back with them, which apparently Indian patients do not, do not demand it, and neither do the hospitals give it back to them. And there's a huge amount of healthcare outsourcing that, that happens too in there. So right from uh, 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 medical services to IT services and healthcare IT services specifically. So uh, in terms of the infrastructure, we need about uh, 1.75 million beds to achieve a target of two beds per thousand. And additional 700,000 doctors are required to reach uh, one medical doctor per thousand. And to attain a uh, doctors and nurse ratio of 2.2, additional 1.6 million nurses are required by 2025. Now, the, these targets will require investment of about roughly $80 billion. And uh, the, the government is taking a huge initiative to get there. The, the recent government who has come in, healthcare has been uh, one, of the, one of the target segments for them because uh, it has been neglected uh, so far. And uh, so it's, it's doing whatever it can to get there. That's why the hospitals are also, the government hospitals are also going, going up in, in terms of that. Uh, the growth in insur insurance sector is going up. The number of people who, are, who have healthcare insurance is only 14%. But it's, of course, going to be a huge amount of uh, impetus into that. Traffic for tertiary care is also going up. In terms of uh, IT spending, uh, EMR is now being seen as a necessity in the larger hospitals, and uh, uh, we are looking at a, a software, hardware, services, and IT uh, spent of about uh, 3.5 uh, billion, going up to 12 billion in the next, uh, next 10 years. Now, if you, if you look at the segmentations and how, how Vista would, would fit in over here, is uh, uh, one is the government, uh, uh, initiative to do a state level implementation, uh, something like uh, that has been done at, at Jordan. That's why I was very keen of what you presented and how, how it has been done in Jordan. Uh, so that's a state level implementation that the government is looking at, doing implementation across the state, going from smaller uh, smaller clinics all the way to a district level hospital. Uh, then private hospital chains are coming up, uh, for example, uh, uh, Apollo or Max or others. The larger tertiary care hospital and super specialty hospital. So we, we, we feel that the state level and the private uh, uh, tertiary care or medical college hospitals where uh, this has a huge huge impact that, that, that it can do. So if, if you look at the state level uh, implementation, uh, this, uh, this particular one is from a state called Haryana. The population of Haryana, I believe, is. Uh, 25 million, or maybe 25 to uh, 30 million. And uh, at a state level, they have a health minister who takes care, uh, who has a principal secretary for medical education and a principal secretary of health, who needs to have uh, various programs that are running under him um, the National Rural Health Management System, the Ayush system, Ayush is the uh, Ayurvedic, Yunani, uh, homopathic, along with the allopathy treatment. Uh, and the me medical education. So now, after that, it goes to a district level uh, hospital. These are larger 100 to 200 bed hospitals at, uh, at a district level. And under that, uh, we have the uh, uh, medical offices, uh, smaller block, uh, smaller town hospital, which they call CHC, which is a community health clinic. So there we have smaller 30 to 75 bed uh, hospitals. And uh, one step lower, of course, is uh, the medical office, the PHC, Primary Health Care Center. They, they have very small six to ten bed, bed hospitals. Now, the, the state is looking to implement all of this. 
uh, vertically under 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 one single system. Uh, a, a similar uh, a system was done by HP and the state of Maharashtra, so which is much bigger than this, and uh, uh, that, that was done maybe about uh, three four years ago. And it's still running; they're still doing that in, in the state. And they're looking for uh, the entire the entire system, right, starting from uh, a simple HIS implementation. Uh, with the static web content and public report statistics is very important in India. With HIS core applications, right from the OP, the IP, the process functions and functional components, to the HIS backend support, including the human resource management, finance accounting, uh, assets management, uh, documentation management, content management. So essentially, they are looking for an entire system uh, to be implemented uh, uh, across the state. In, in phases. Now, uh, usually the, the phases are very, um, very, uh, very challenging. With the amount of time they, they give us a very less to implement the whole thing. Now, uh, how how Vista uh, comes into play over here is uh, we need to have a large system that caters to different kind of hospitals at at, at, at any any given particular time. And you have to interconnect various third-party systems along with it. And of course, you need to have various BI tools also along with it, because each, each one of them requires several you know, implements. Of course, then uh, you need a web-based system to do all of this. The biggest challenge here is this short project implementation time that that, that is being given to, to do this. So there has to be a system which is uh, modular, where it, it can be implemented and take, taken forward. and. Uh, the other concern, of course, is the financials. So for example, the HP implementation I told you about, they, they, they have done the implementation based, based on build, own, operate, and transfer basis. So they have taken uh, a certain financial thing on, on them, and then the forward. But going forward, the, the government takes over and makes, makes payments. <coughs> the upfront payment, of course, uh, is there in certain cases, but not, not, not too many. Uh, and uh, the standard, the standard issues are always there, uh, clinical transformation and training. We don't want to training is required because none, none, none of these uh, clinicians are used to uh, doing anything other than paper. Uh, and of course, they like to change and workflow interruptions. Now, if we, if we go over to a large super speciality or a medical college hospital where Vista is extremely uh, good fit. We've been trying to uh, do this and uh, Especially medical college because as uh, uh, Dr. Paul also mentioned yesterday when, when he was graduating, he did not know anything about an EMR or how it could help. That goes the same way even today in India in larger, larger medical college and uh, universities. They do not teach the students about the benefits or EMR or what EMR or EHR can do. So if you can have uh, VISTA implemented at the university level, so these people when they're coming out at that time they will demand it. They will pull it in instead of somebody trying to push an EHR system on them. Till the time the government makes it a regulation to do it. So at larger hospitals, they are looking at, uh, of course, the clinical services, right from the medical records, the nursing management, order management, OT management, um, and so on. The administrative services, investigation services, right from pathology, microbiology, uh, hemat, nuclear medicines, to inventory, accounting, billing, and other services. So once again, the you know, HR needs to be such that it's uh, either has every uh, component built in, or it is talking to every every other component out there, a third-party component that that could be implemented uh, fast. So uh, we, we are looking at uh, various internet portal, identity management, uh, uh, service management. So they are looking at a whole echelon of, of services to be implemented. And for each one, for updating patient billing, accounting services, uh, patient admin services, master patient index, pathology, microbiology, and human resource, they need everything else, medical record, they need everything else. So basically, they, they bring out the RFP that says so they need everything else, and they need it now. So Vista for a large hospital is an extremely good fit. That, that's what we believe, that's what we're trying to push. Uh, and uh, there are interconnects uh, that that we need to work on, which which is there, which is there, and which has to be 
uh, within within the uh, the reach of the the hospital itself, and it, it needs to be uh, a, a, mo a more modular basis that can can implement faster, uh, and it needs to be a web-based system, not not really a Citrix, but something that that's a real web. That, that's where EWD and some of the things that we have done comes comes into play. Uh, of course, the other concerns are a shorter project time, application cost is high. So the way we are addressing it is that if you're open source, then of course there is a, uh, the, the cost of the, the software is very, very low as compared to the other larger vendors out there. The hardware costs are low. So the other thing that we try and tell the, the hospitals that why this should be implemented. Well, that, that was my uh, two cents on the whole thing. different uh, different kind of hospitals. So let's say it's a block level hospital, it has a different, 
uh, uh, kind of auto set per se, then then the one which is in the smaller hospital, like only six beds, right? it was only taking care of uh, you know um, A and C and gynae and stuff. And compared to the district level hospital, so they're trying to standardize that. And now what's also coming is that the government is trying to uh, gradually force the use of EHR. Right. So unless initiative is done from the government level, it's not going to percolate. But it's starting to happen now. So I think at that point of time, it's going to make a huge impact of, because they, the amount of population going up and the amount of uh, uh, miss, uh, uh, I mean, the, the wrong medication, the medical issues that, that are happening in India, it has to be curbed sooner or later. No, we, we did we did the bed management system. There. Just a piece of the bed. Just a piece of the bed how did it integrate with uh, what Oham did? And, uh, okay. Oham, Oham did the uh, Vista implementation at RGCI, yeah. and the HIS implementation was done by a company called uh, Shishti. It's a company called Shishti that has the front end HIS. Oham is the uh, EHR, the Vista EHR. Oham is what they call it. So there there was a disconnect between. Uh, between the Vista and the HIA that, that was working in terms of this bed management system. Even the HIAs could not give them what, what we gave them on a you know nice looking screen on a huge thing where everybody was able to see all the beds together. So we, we implemented uh, a system uh, using a simple ASP. Whatever you saw there is actually developed on ASP on, on uh, uh, SQL. And we implement MERT. So we, we get the data out of, uh, out of the uh, out of Vista on HL7, the ADT messages, the A01, A03, and the specific ADT messages. And we consume that, and we show that on the on a GUI. That's all we did. And then there's a cron job that runs, because once in a while you end up missing certain messages. So then every two hours, I believe, right? I'm not sure, there's a cron job that runs that checks both the systems, and if there's any discrepancy, it runs it again. It goes back and fetches that data, uh, that particular message. Well, thank you very much.